April 21st, 2019. Tax Slayer Center, Moline, Illinois. The Shield, a group that has dominated WWE since their debut, enters through the crowd one final time. And that is primarily due to the decisions of this guy, Dean Ambrose. Prior to this farewell event, Dean informed WWE management that he would not be re-signing with the company. And if you're aware of the man's WWE work, it's not hard to understand why he would make that choice. While his SHIELD brothers Seth Rollins and Roman Reigns would go on to be multiple-time WWE World Champions, Dean Ambrose was only given one chance to hold the top prize, and it's not by a lack of trying from Dean. WWE management for every high it gave Dean Ambrose unfortunately gave him a massive low. He won the long-awaited SHIELD Triple Threat match at Battleground. He had a main event match for the WWE title with Triple H a few weeks before WrestleMania where we all knew at that point that it was going to be Roman's crowning moment. Dean Ambrose was a fantastic wrestler, had natural likability, and a swell of organic support. But of course, WWE is going to WWE, and they never truly saw him as a top guy. And to add insult to injury, the former WWE champion was only paid $500 for this farewell show which he later revealed is the minimum for just showing up as a WWE talent and you're not booked on the card. And don't get it twisted, while these two people are the same person, they are not the same professional wrestler. And through the ashes of Dean Ambrose would rise John Moxley, because you might be able to put a lunatic down, but you can never kill a Death Rider. I was dangerous before. These days, all I drink is blood. This is what you call a paradigm shift. While John Moxley had a long, violent career prior to WWE, I would say the true birth of the paradigm shifter came at midnight, May 1st, 2019. The naturally close to the chest John Moxley doesn't post usually on social media. But at the very moment his WWE contract ended, he posted a Fast and Furious movie level trailer. As he escapes from jail, the video is showcased with Easter eggs galore, keeping the internet buzzing on where the newly minted Moxley would show up next. You know, if you're a betting man, you know when to call your shot, and you know, you better not miss. Said I demand a thank you! Carving a path of destruction here at All Elite. As Moxley debuted at AEW's Double or Nothing, this was not a simple reskin of Dean Ambrose. John Moxley's look, violence, style felt more like a monster being released into the world of professional wrestling. AEW's more liberal contract style gave something that mainstream wrestling hadn't seen in a very long time, which was wrestlers being able to go work for other companies. This meant sooner rather than later, we were going to get dream matches in places like GCW and NJPW. John Moxley's character, in and of itself, is a journeyman, is a traveler, almost something that you would see back in the territory days, making the unpredictability of where he might pop up next truly special. This momentum led Moxley into dethroning the first ever AEW World Champion in Chris Jericho. He was so white hot, it was improbable to think anyone could stop him. I mean, it's not like the entire world was about to shut down, right? Right? But the truth is, the undeniable fact is, I am the baddest son of a bitch in this game. Worldwide this morning, growing concern over a growing health crisis. Tonight, U.S. cases of coronavirus more than doubling, with two new cases in Southern California and one in Maricopa County, Arizona. COVID-19 can be characterized as a pandemic. It's going to get worse and worse and worse. Wrestling, unlike every other sport, has no off-season. So that means 365 days a year, you were trying to put as many butts in seats as possible. The pandemic era really was like the wild wild west when it came to professional wrestling because everyone collectively was just trying to figure it out. 
Having no crowd or a limited capacity crowd isn't necessarily ideal for a performer, especially when most of your job is getting a reaction out of a crowd. On top of all of this, it's even more of an adjustment when you're a newly crowned world champion in a company that is just in its infancy. So what is poor John Moxley to do? Well, he balled the f*** out. The Paradigm Shifter went out there every single night and performed and worked like he had the entirety of All Elite Wrestling resting on his shoulders. Jake Hager, Lance Archer, The Butcher, MJF, Brian Cage, Mr. Brody Lee, Darby Allen. This mix of defenses gave a shot of adrenaline into the soul of AEW and the entirety of the pandemic era of professional wrestling. Yeah, that's right, I said it, deal with it. Whoa! Even the ending to John Moxley's first AEW title reign saw a new big bad crowned in Kenny Omega, invisible hand and all. It was a natural ending point of one moment in time, but unfortunately, it would be followed by one that was cut way too short. The death of John Hubert left a giant hole not only in the AEW locker room, but also in the world of professional wrestling. And it left an even bigger hole in the lives of his friends and family. Brody Lee and John Moxley did not only face off against each other multiple times in AEW and WWE, but they are quite literally cut from the same indie wrestling cloth coming up through the business that got them both signed to WWE around the same time. Brody Lee's death impacted Moxley so much to where he dedicated an entire chapter in his later autobiography that he wrote on the day of his passing. As time moved on though, we saw the world beginning to open up as COVID restrictions became more lax, meaning that more shows were able to happen for smaller promotions. And this saw John Moxley's work rate triple. The indie circuit for the most part did not exist during the lockdown era. Once a lot of these smaller promotions started announcing dates, a lot of the AEW roster very understandably wanted to help out these promotions that they had previously cut their teeth in. John Moxley was one of the first people to jump and answer this call. No longer having the AEW world title, Mox spent a lot more post reign time working indie dates to ensure a better relaunch for places like GCW and Bloodsport. Not to also mention John and his wife, host and media personality Renee Paquette welcomed their first child together. So to recap, in about two years, John Moxley has had a world title reign, survived a pandemic, lost a close personal friend, welcomed his first child into the world, and is currently trying to carry the indie scene on his back like he did for AEW during the lockdown era of professional wrestling. Needless to say, half of that is a full plate. I don't know John Moxley. I'm not friends with Dean Ambrose, nor am I acquaintances with Jonathan Good. But while the next turn in our story at the moment was shocking, in hindsight, it was the best thing he could have done. John Moxley, after returning home from yet another show, had a short, tense conversation with his wife, shortly called an Uber, and within 15 minutes, checked himself in to Desert Hope Treatment Center in Las Vegas, Nevada for alcohol rehabilitation. In a piece by ESPN after the fact, John Moxley stated that he thought fans and his fellow wrestlers would shun him, stating, and I'm fired, and everyone hates me. And while he may not have known it at the time, that next AEW Dynamite saw a swell of support from not only the AEW fateful in the locker room, but the professional wrestling world. The Death Rider might have assumed that he crashed and burned, but the funny thing is, sometimes, beasts rise from ashes. And that's what I'm all about. Living my life to the fullest. I've said it before. I am a sick man. I do this because I like it. John Moxley was walking amongst the AEW faithful once again, but tonight as he returned home, it just felt bigger than that. It's extremely hard to believe, but these two pictures are the same guy only months apart. But how would the crowd react to his time away? This moment right here probably made the night before a bit of a restless night for the man. Well, thanks to some asshole in the front row, we got our answer. A little while ago, Hey, hey, go yourself. Get that guy out of here. Piece of well, he ain't 
big change, man. The AEW fans and wrestling world embrace John now more than ever. His work did not go unnoticed like in the other place. A moment of unity that you don't usually see in the world of professional wrestling saw a unanimous support of Moxley as he supported us. Now rolling with his friends in the Blackpool Combat Club, Moxley looked amazing in the ring and looked like he was legitimately having the most fun of his career. But little did you, I, or Tony Khan know, we would have to rely on the ace once again to carry the company during a trying time. The bad news is I'm injured and I need surgery. Oh, God. Wow. A couple of things are broken. The biggest one is my heart. CM Punk being injured five days after winning the AEW world title left a Pepsi logo sized hole in the main event scene. And with a summer full of injuries and backstage fighting, someone now had to carry the AEW flag. Well, one Eliminator tournament later, and at Forbidden Door, we saw John Moxley in a position we've seen him many times before, main eventing with his NJPW rival and fellow ace, Hiroshi Tanahashi. To see this man six months ago in the position he was in, to soon be back on top of the mountain, really does make Mox miles above any other professional wrestler who has ever stepped foot into a ring. And while many saw Moxley as the safe choice to hang on to the interim title as CM Punk was healing from injury, that doesn't mean it was the wrong choice. To see so many of the best professional wrestlers all over the world, The following summer really did prove why Jon Moxley was the guy in AEW. He had amazing standalone matches with people like Takeshna, Wheeler Yuta, and Daniel Garcia, not to mention his many bouts with Brian Danielson. All of this accompanying a solid Blackpool Combat Club vs. Jericho Appreciation Society feud really did make this summer, while one of distraction from the bigger stories in the world of professional wrestling, were still entertaining week after week. And of course, eventually CM Punk would return to AEW for a small feud with Jon Moxley, but then this would lead to Jon Moxley picking up the ball for AEW once again following a Punk exit. In each one of these situations that I've described to you today, Jon Moxley didn't have to be there. He didn't have to be that guy, but yet he was every single time. And that loyalty cannot be taught in the professional wrestling world. And we solemnly truly ever see that level of dedication to one company. This would then lead to October 2022, where John Moxley signed a five-year deal with All Elite Wrestling. This would not only see him in a professional wrestling aspect, but in a coaching aspect as well, aiding in the development of the future of All Elite Wrestling talent. While he still performs on the indie circuit, Mox is AEW as much as AEW is Mox. Like Cena, like Tanahashi, like Sting, by all accounts, John Moxley is a beast of a different nature, one that has fallen in love with the art of combat. No matter where, the Death Rider decides to shift the paradigm next, to me and many others, he will always be the ace of AEW. Thank you guys so much for watching Extreme League Wrestling. What is your favorite John Moxley moment or match? Let me know in the comments down below. While I love doing top 10 videos, uh, I also just really love doing long form content like this, where I get to gush about uh, professional wrestlers I really enjoy and really like. And John Moxley has been on my list ever since I did my Eddie Kingston video essay uh, earlier last year. So, super excited to be able to do this. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. This has been Extreme League Wrestling. And we'll catch you next time.